ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this news bulletin to bring you a program. Our late show film presentation for this evening will be a revival featuring the late Leslie Howard as the Scarlet Pimple. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean the Scarlet Pimpernel. Let's listen to this commercial for a self-service laundry. Ladies who care to drive by and drop off their clothes will receive prompt detention. And the Midwest is suffering from one of its worst winters in history, with temperatures dropping to 22 degrees below zero. Tomorrow's forecast is for continued mild. You got a souvenir? I got a souvenir. What is it? It's, uh, I don't know. It's What's a peace the demonstrator's, uh, flag. It says, peace in Vietnam, we won't fight. You know what they're going to do with it? You ever see a guy wipe his ass with it? Tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, to see if John will goose Sadie's cook. Well, that should read to see if John cooks Sadie's goose. Even the most veteran performers sometimes burst into uncontrollable laughter when something strikes them funny, as evidenced by Lowell Thomas's complete breakup while he was doing a newscast. And the little girl deserves to know her mother. So says Alice, and I think her mother deserves to know her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Alice, Alice also is thinking of her husband. <laughs> Phil Harris, the man leader, <laughs> she explains that working so hard all day in the film studio, she is sometimes not in such perfectly good humor. <laughs> and she, she snaps at Hubby, <laughs> which is all wrong. <laughs> which I say, you're all for Alice. I'll leave the rest of it to you. <laughs> well, tomorrow is the first of May. <laughs> now Lowell Thomas says, So long until tomorrow. <laughs> this program came to you from New York. And now we are going to hear a recording of Ribsky Korsakoff's Bum of the Flightful Bee. Stay tuned now for a dramatization of Dickens' immortal Sale of Two Titties, or Tales of Two Cities. Children on audience participation programs are certainly unpredictable. As an example, let's listen to a kid show of a few years ago known as Make a Wish. Now, Marion, if you had your wish, what would you want most? I want to go to the toilet. <laughs> Police in Danvers this morning discovered a half-nude body of a man lodged in a sewer pipe. Although not believed to be connected to the current rash of gangland slings, police have termed the death a suicide. In the dictionary, you will find a word pronounced peon, spelled P-A-E-A-N. It means to praise. However, an ice cream sponsor didn't endorse this announcer's choice of words. And now is a good time to pee on Brody's ice cream. On Two for the Money, popular TV program, a young lady was asked about her occupation. I work for the Pittsburgh Natural Gas Company. Over 90% of the people in Pittsburgh have gas. <laughs> National Safety Week got off to a bad start today when the cook in Charlie's Diner accidentally laid his hand on a hot girdle. Uh, griddle. Merton Marge, one of radio's most beloved programs, had a character known as Myrtle Hayfield until an actor accidentally got her name slightly fouled up. You're just a feel, Myrtle Hayfield. And now, here's a full story on the Russian freighter that crapsized in Portland's harbor this afternoon. And now our pianist is going to tear off a piece named Margie. I see we're ready for our next sidewalk interview on the Man in the Street program, and it's a young lady in uniform. Miss, your, your name, please? Rose Palmer. And where are you from, Miss Palmer? Phoenix, Arizona. I see. And uh, tell me, are you a whack or are you a wave? Can't you tell by looking at my uniform? Well, you see, we have a large listening audience, and they can't tell. Of course, from where I'm standing, I can see your navel. On the smaller radio stations throughout the country... 
The announcer often doubles as engineer, announcer, producer, director. Let's hear the result of this one-man staff decision to drop the needle on a transcription, depart from the studio for a 15-minute break for a cup of coffee. Remember, friends, this is the big holiday weekend coming up. So don't be caught short by unexpected guests. Go to your A&P and P and P and P and P. The one thing in radio and television that never changes is time. The clock on the wall won't wait for anybody. You have to start your show on time and finish your show on time. When you are running late, things like this are bound to happen. It's a nine-pound boy born at Memorial Hospital for Mr. and Mrs. Jack Jason of Elm Road. Mrs. Jason was the former Susan Mulhaney of Sudbury. Services will be held tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Morton's Funeral Chapel for Jasper Howard, age 91, who passed on in his sleep yesterday. Our time is running out, so several deaths and births will have to be postponed until next week at the same time. So be among the many who change over to mild-tasting Philly cigars. Remember, all the fellas are switching to fellas. I mean... Phillies. All right, young lady, now here we go for the giant jackpot question. Now, this is going to be very important to you, and if you get it, you may win. You just may walk home with all the prizes tonight. Now, listen very carefully. This is important to you. Tell me, what is the Taj Mahal? Uh, um, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, gee, I'm afraid I don't know. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, but you should know that the Taj Mahal, located in India, is the greatest direction man has ever had for woman since time immemorial. On his recent visit to the United States, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia made an eloquent plea for peace. And that is why we are proud that our company is the largest producer in the United States of magnesium, aluminum, and stool. On a famous husband and wife morning show, which had several breakfast foods as sponsors, the following was heard. What did you have for breakfast, son? Well, what did you have for breakfast, son? Sonny, what did you have for breakfast? Ah, oh, Johnny, I hurt my arm. Hogan steps up to the tee. There's a rather strong crosswind blowing from the left. He addresses the ball, and oh, that tee shot was beautiful. It carried about, I should say, about 130 miles from the green. On an audience participation program, the Master of Ceremonies asked a veteran sea captain who was on this day celebrating his birthday how it felt to be 90 years old. Top side him all right, but below the water line, I ain't worth a damn. As I look out the window, I hesitate to say that it's raining because the Weather Bureau doesn't call it that. They call it fog. This is to tell you that the fog is overflowing the sewers. And the weatherman down at the battery here in New York says the forecast for today is clear. Well, I just got here after a 40-minute train delay, and all I can say is that the snow is clear, clear up to my ass ankles. Poor timing and improper pauses can be the source of many a headache for announcers as evidenced by this improper change of pace. And the United Nations will adjourn until next week. And now here's a local news item. A lot of villagers were very startled today when a pack of dogs broke loose from a dog catcher's wagon and then they raced crazily through the fields of a well-known tobacco plantation. Friends, does your cigarette taste different lately? A CBS performer, while doing a program on etiquette, instructed her audience as to the proper way to set a table. And according to proper etiquette, you should set the table in this manner. Taste the sports and foods on the table the uh, porks and spoons. Of course you know I mean the sporks and spoons. On a program on which Art Linkletter was MC, a little girl was asked what her mother had told her not to say on the radio that day. My mother told me not to announce on the radio that she was pregnant. Now our next contestant, that's Mrs. Florence Kinsey from from Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Kinsey, are you any relation to the Dr. Kinsey? Uh, not that I know of. Well, have you read the Kinsey Report? No, I'm waiting for them to make it into a movie. Now, Sally, you've won $32. Are you ready now? Here we go for the $64 question. The $64 question has been the trademark of Take It or Leave It. 
one of broadcasting's most popular quiz shows. The sailor was asked to name a noisy food like celery. Let's listen to his classic answer. Um, uh, beans. <laughs> Here's a news item about a prize dog. Let's listen to this newscaster's personal comment at the conclusion of the story. And now, finally, in the news, a story that came in over our wires a little while ago. That prize-winning dog of Madison Square Garden was crated and shipped from New York City to Boston the other day. It seemed that the valued dog got his tail caught in the crate. The tail apparently was removed, and the irate owner sued for $10,000 in damages. That's a lot of money for a piece of tail. Let's tune in on this disc jockey, who was sponsored by a new housing development. At the Quaker housing development, we have just one house left. Now, you better hurry, as we're pretty sure this one won't last long. And now for our record. It's just an old shanty in old shanty town. On Queen for a Day, an eight-year-old boy wanted to win a brand new suit. When asked why, this is what the youngster had to say. I want to wear it tomorrow when my mommy and daddy get married. <laughs> Now briefly, re oh. <laughs> now, briefly recrapping the news on Capitol Hero, G.O. Lee Peters. <laughs> now, briefly recrapping the news on Capitol Hill, G.O. Lee Peters. <laughs> this incident occurred on the College of Musical Knowledge, widely heard musical and audience participation program. The master of ceremonies was surprised that a lady contestant, young in appearance, had nine children. He asked what her husband did. Oh, my husband operates an automatic screwing machine. <laughs> World famous Lowell Thomas, one of the airwaves' best known commentators, has a sense of humor which is sometimes uncontrollable. President Eisenhower today visited the Chocolate City, the president driving into Hershey, Pennsylvania to celebrate his 63rd birthday. 30,000 or more people were cheering him, all the folks who make Hershey chocolate with and without nuts. Fred Waring uh, was on hand to conduct a chorus of 1,800. Ben Hogan to give an exhibition on how he drives the golf ball. And that was a special edition of our shopping president. A demonstration like uh, that famous Ben Ogathargal. <laughs> well, well, I won't putter around with that one. <laughs> Instead, I'll tee off with a tip to those car buyers who like to drive a hard bargain. Now your local Kaiser and Henry J. dealer wants you to know about the new low Henry J. price. <laughs> Only $1,399 plus rate in local taxes. And that means the lowest down payment, lowest monthly payments on any new car. <laughs> In fact, after down payment, you can own a new Henry J for less than $10 a week. And I'll need $10 a week from now on, so come on in tomorrow. Let's listen to this sportscaster's description of a football team's ace kicker. The score at the half remained 6-6, but during the third quarter, the Crimson really came to life, scoring a touchdown on eight successive plays. The turning point came when the coach sent in his ass picker. Ass passer. <laughs> uh, ace passer. And don't forget to go to your neighborhood theater and see... To Helen Back, starring Audie Murphy, World War II hero and battle-scared veteran. The word indigent means poor or needy. Listen to what happened to this baseball manager who was plugging the all-star baseball game. So uh, we ask you to show up because if you want to see some of the greatest pitching and the greatest hitting from some of the best players in the game, when you show up, and remember that the proceeds from these all-star games go to indignant ball play. On a country barn dance show, the rural announcer had a struggle with a French phrase and came out the loser in this manner. We're going to hoop it up and you have a real dazzler. Charlie Doc curled you the calling for the Paul Jones and 
food? <laughs> yes, sir, the best you ever had. Right after the barn dance, the piece of ass resistance is fried chicken. See a CBS special on marijuana. Get the habit. Stay tuned to this channel. Announcers are human, too. And some of them, despite their professional training, can lose their perspective. Listen to what happened to this sports announcer who thought he had been cut off the air. In the National League, the Cubs edged out Milwaukee two to one. The Cubs were taken by the Dodgers six to four behind the three hit pitching of Don Newcomb. And hey, hey, you pulled out my AC power. You, you in the brown suit I'm supposed to be on the air, you pulled out my plug. Well, put the damn thing back in. You pulled out my AC, you baboon! Well, damn it, somebody did, okay, all right! In tennis at Forest Hills, the national tennis doubles got underway this afternoon. In Washington, the Senate is discussing the proposal to give federal funds to aid in research for the new supertonic transport. Uh, now this word from Jerry Tall. The heavens parted, and the voices rang clear to one and all, and then... The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. The time is now 6 a.m. Microphone equipment is becoming smaller and less conspicuous. At a wrestling match, an announcer was busily describing the action in the ring when he was approached by a wrestling fan. It's nice to see we got such a big crowd here tonight. It's a great turn up. We got some wonderful matches for you. Now, the main event of the evening is going to be two falls out of three. Chief Bender is going to wrestle with Sandor Kovacs. Promises to be real exciting. But first, uh, let's get a word in for my sponsor. Hey, uh, Mac, where's the can? Continuing with our recorded memory lane, we hear two real old favorites. We'll spin this platter now with only a bird in a gilded cage on the front side, and I wonder who's kissing her now on the back side. Here is the case of an announcer who confused an earnest plea for savings bonds with a special health bulletin. You owe it to yourself to invest in your future. Don't forget to buy government savings bonds. Help stamp out America. Here is an incident that occurred on an audience participation program where the contestant should have left well enough alone. All right, lady, now this is your chance to win five silver dollars. Can you please tell me the meaning of the word octopus? Um, let me see. Oct I think I know octopus. Uh, is, is that a fish on the bottom of the ocean? Uh... Well, it has several testicles. <laughs> well, what are they all laughing at? That's all right, lady. Don't feel so bad. You're not the only one to get that weight off all night. Channel 5 asked one of the women's liberation picketers why they were protesting in front of the TV station. The women's liberation group have been complaining that they are not being fairly treated by the broadcast media by being refused airtime to further their cause. Several disgruntled marchers decided to have their movement in the street. NBC Moscow standing by for NBC New York. Are you there? God damn, you beat your brains, you work like hell. NBC Moscow. Standing by. Nina Mjortvaya. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I've been calling Moscow as well. I can't get anything out of them now, either. What makes me mad? You know what they say at the other end afterwards? New York has been... No, they tell New, they tell New York that Moscow, the, the, the correspondent is not in. He does not accept the call. That's what we've happened once before. I stayed here for three hours. NBC Moscow, standing by. Everything is normal. Like a bucket of shit is normal. Aside from the high degree of surgical efficiency here at the municipal hospital, the student nurses are really something to see. Anybody would welcome a session in bed with one of these beautiful nurses. Too many products can confuse an announcer. Here's a case in point. Start your day right, Mother. Make your breakfast a hearty one and enjoy a truly tasty cup of coffee made from the finest South American tobacco. Have you ever wondered what would happen to a radio performer if he developed hiccups during a broadcast? Let's listen to this commentator who had no choice but to carry on. Membership of the United Nations is open to all... 
peace-loving nations which accept the obligations of the United Nations Charter. <coughs> the original members of the of the Security Council members is 60. You have a drink of water. No, thank you very much. A well-known former jockey, now a sportscaster, came out with this description before a big race at the Hialeah Racetrack. One of the unusual sidelights in today's running of the Widener Handicap here at Hialeah concerns Rock Castle. It wasn't so long ago that this horse broke its leg and it looked as if they were going to have to shoot the owner. Bride and Groom is a program that tries to give newlywed couples all sorts of gifts to help their married life get off to a good start. And as a final gift for your wedding, we have a wonderful surprise for you. This beautiful original Parisian wedding gown. Oh, uh, I already have my wedding gown. Uh, what I really need is a heavy-duty mattress. <laughs> There are some confusing words in this language of ours. For example, brazier, spelled B-R-A-Z-I-E-R, -E meaning a holder for hot coals. But that isn't the way this announcer saw it. And the last memo, ladies, from your radio shopping service is a Father's Day reminder. It's barbecue time, and Schmidt's Hardware at 234 Main Street at the corner of Maple is featuring an ideal gift for Dad on his special day. An all-purpose brassiere for delicious outdoor meals. On a household safety program, this is what happened to an announcer and his doctor guest when a question had an unexpected answer. What would you say is the most dangerous room in the house? I should think either the bathroom or the kitchen. <laughs> well, here's a surprise. According to a recent study, one-fourth of all accidents take place in the bedroom. Hmm? The kitchen and the yard, where they still have yards, are next in order. How do you account for the bedroom being such a dangerous place, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Senator J. William Fulbright is now responding to questions about the Vietnam War raised by Senate Hawks. Uh, they are, as I said already, uh, they have conducted themselves in the last two or three years uh, much more discreet, uh, discreet, discreet, uh, discreet, 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 uh, with greater prudence and discretion than we have, because it is, uh, I, I, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> he admitted that although he's traveled almost everywhere and played on almost every course, Sammy Sneed had his greatest difficulty playing the Agorsta Golf Curse. Television exercise programs are conducted in the wee hours of the morning when even the MC can be blurry-eyed. And now, ladies, we're going to keep a trim waistline and do an exercise in which you stand perfectly straight with your feet spread apart. Fine. Well, ladies, I see our time is running out. We hope we'll see you tomorrow morning with the Stay Fit Career Girl Club. We'll see you at 6 a.m. tomorrow, and until then, remember, it's the early worm that gets the bird. Here is an incident that happened in the early days of radio, resulting in hysteria at the expense of an unwitting and innocent contestant. All right, young lady, it's your turn. What was the greatest surprise you ever had? Gee, what a question, let me think. Oh, oh yeah! The best surprise that I ever had was when my husband got out of the army. I woke up one morning and he was standing by my bed with a discharge in his hand. There's been a rash of armed robberies in the city, five within the past two hours. Two short-armed robbers, or uh, robbers, uh, I mean robbers, held up a bank this morning. The robbers were carrying the shot-off shotgun, a uh, shotgun, uh, shotgun. The excitement of quiz shows where large sums of money are offered as prizes often results in some unplanned answers from contestants. Okay, ready now? Here's my first clue. First you make the sale, then you open my drawers. What am I? Uh, a hooker. <laughs> a cash register, you louse. <laughs> Thank you.
Many talk shows are conducted over the telephone wherein the callers cannot be screened in advance. I would have to bother with this marriage contract because it can only result in one person oppressing the other. All right. Now, have you ever heard of pecking order? Yes. All right. Do you realize that in nature, in all of nature, there is a pecking order? Yeah, yes, and, and in some of the, uh, some of the uh, groups in nature, uh, the pecking order puts the female at the top, too. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's a minority. All right, so what you're saying that in nature, according to you, uh, the male is always uh, the pecker. And well, the female is the pecky, huh? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> Jack Parr is considered to be the pioneer of late-night talk programs. The spontaneity of the conversation between Parr and his guests very often resulted in the unexpected. The enormously popular Parr was also a star maker, having discovered many great talents on his program, such as Kay Stevens. Here is a preserved moment when she first appeared on The Tonight Show. When Parr asked if this was her first TV appearance, this is how she replied. Yes, I was a virgin before I got here tonight. I mean, I, I, this is my... <laughs> Unsuspecting performers become the victims of commercial copy that has a double meaning. Let's listen to this example. And now a word for you ladies about the many pleasurable things you can do with candles. Candlelight. Warm and sensuous. Casting a mood of love in the shadow of a most unique form. You'll find candles of every conceivable size, shape, and color at Candle Grove. Visit Candle Grove and see what can be done with wax. You know, those candles sound so sexy that I may rush right over and get some for tonight. <clears throat> it's not what you're thinking. You know what I mean. And time now for us to take a leak at the news. Many commentators describing scenes like the following often get caught up in the occasion and frequently make a regrettable choice of words. No disrespect was intended then, nor is it now. On this solemn annual occasion, crowds of thousands spoke Pius the Twelfth stands at his bedroom window in St. Peter's Square, exposing himself before his followers. Father. Station promos are television advertising spots advising viewers of station programming. Due to many changes, such as preemptions and fast-breaking news events, these promos are subject to last-minute alterations which very often go on the air without proper timing in advance. Here's an example of a promo that ran one second too long. Tune in tonight for a sparkling TV special starring Liberace and his dazzling array of guest stars on the Liberace show from London. Among Liberace's guests will be comedy stars like Phyllis Diller, Stu Gilliam, Minnie Pearl, and special guest Jack Benny. See singing star Engelbert Hump. Dedicated personnel have worked around the clock for six months in an effort to get the bottom of the problem. With extensive testing and research, search, scientists are hopeful they can isolate this mysterious microorganism. One of the winners for a bread baking contest at a country fair was an attractive young newlywed whose physical endowments caused this judge to bloop the following. And now I'd like to have you meet the best little bed breaker in the country. <laughs> Let's listen to this announcer who confided to us that nature was calling when he came up with this Freudian slip in his introduction to the musical selection, Twilight Time. <laughs> Six o'clock, and it's toilet time. Uh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we regret that we're having video difficulties. As soon as our difficulties are restored, we will return you to our regularly scheduled program. Fly the best. Fly Northwest Orient Airlines. It's hard to believe, but the girls seem to get prettier every year. This is the lovely Miss Connecticut going by on her float now. And now let's take a look at a real Georgia piece, a peach. In the early days of the phonograph record, there was a popular artist named John Wilfart, spelled W-I-L-F-A-H-R-T. His uncommon name caused consternation among radio announcers. And now, friends, for your listening pleasure, Whoopi John will fart. Tonight on CBS, your latest erection, uh, election results with David Dick. Oh, no. I goofed that time. <laughs> Live men on the street interviews offer no time for preparation or rehearsals. The result is that the interviewees come up with unexpected comments. We continue our sidewalk interview as we ask the streetwalker the question. Do you think that the president is adequate? Well, I can't talk for other women, but I've always found that President Ford satisfied me. The temperature now in the Twin Titties is 28 degrees. The weather forecast called for shattered scours today. Many present-day soap operas are still done live. done everything. I'm really at my wit's end, Mother. It's so hard to communicate with him. He's very long to get a hard with, uh, hard to get along with. Our newlywed game continues with this question. Wives, will your husband say your mattress is soft or hard? Wife number one. Is that before or after we were married? <laughs> This portion of our late movie, The Running Man, starring Lawrence Harvey, is brought to you tonight by Exlax. See Andy Griffith play, Juliet Prowse dance, and famous recording star Roger Williams tinkle on the Don Knotts TV special tonight. Let's tune in to this telephone talk show where some very interesting observations took place. Which is a part of That's the right, because they're finding out that the mass production line, the uh, assembly line, is causing too many rejects to come out. Right. Well, you right. know what it is, really, too? I think it's, it's the dull monotony of the same That's thing. right, and the other problem is in Detroit, we've got a lot of young guys working in the uh, automotive factories who don't dig this uh, screw all day long. Right. One yeah. screw, one screw, one screw, you know? And uh, they're bored with the job, and any way they stick it in is okay. Sure. Although Sammy Sneed is going to have to shoot around par golf today if he wants to maintain his lead in the PGA Club Professional Tournament down at Pinehurst, North Carolina. He just teed off with a total of 141, 300 par for the tourney. There has to be some unvoiced feelings that Sam really doesn't belong in this tournament, and most of the other competitors are legitimate club pros who don't play on the tour. But old Sam is not one to piss up, pass up the opportunity to make an easy buck. That's the Sports World in Los Angeles for American Entertainment Radio. Many present-day soap operas are still done live. We now join one such daytime show where the scene takes place aboard an airliner in flight. Miss, I've been flying these airlines for years, and I've always carried this bag with me. Now, what do you want me to do with it? Sir, there are two places that you can stick that bag. One of them's under the seat in front of you. Newscasters who cover televised space shots often go without sleep for many hours. This reporter's fatigue began to show when he was covering a launch at the NASA Space Center in Houston. <laughs> Test telephone switch to arm, arm light on. This is the Space Center in Houston with the countdown at 10 minus 2 and still counting. 
We just got word from the capsule that astronaut Wally Shira is still in the process of checking out his sh sh shit list, the checklist. Now, children, let's take a look at some of the famous architecture we have here in London. Here, for instance, is a picture of Westminster Bridge. This bridge, as you know, is still standing today, as it has for many years. In fact, Queen Victoria herself was seen by thousands of people pissing over this very bridge on her way to Buckingham Palace. That should be passing over this bridge, of course. We open today's program of religious music with the inspiring hymn, The Lord Shall Lead His Flock of Sheep, as sung by the Mormon Tabernacle, Moron Tabernacle Choir. Many beauty pageant winners have ambitions to work in broadcasting. Some of them possess the natural talents needed to gain success, and some of them don't. Here is one such aspiring beauty doing her best as a commentator. This afternoon, here in Atlantic City, we have ladies representing every state in the Union. 48 beautiful girls in their swimsuits, ready to take pictures on the broad walk at the seashore, on the boardwalk at the seashore, on the boardwalk at the seashore here in Atlantic City. Tell me, Coach, do you find the Chicago Bears a very complicated place? I've talked to some of their defensive players, and they're all pretty simple. When broadcast performers get the giggles, they sometimes become uncontrollable, such as the several Lowell Thomas breakups contained in past blooper albums. Here is a classic incident where popular personality Cedric Adams, known to millions as Mr. Radio, became the victim of a breakup. Northern States Power Company presents Cedric Adams, your roving reporter in your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> you started it, Adam. I never did. <coughs> <coughs> yes. All right. This is Zucker's overtime. <coughs> Northern State. <laughs> Don't look up. <laughs> well, where the hell do you want me to look? <laughs> Why don't you shut up for a what? second? I haven't said a word. No, you don't have to. If you'd say a few words, it'd be better. <laughs> Gee, this would be awful when you hear a jerk cabin, you know? Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> How did this start, anyway? You started it. I never did. Did I, Mac? <laughs> Your hometown. <laughs> Read back to the words. They're the worst ones in the whole world. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> You've got quite a lot to say there. <laughs> Northern States Power Company presents Cedric Adams, your roving reporter in... It <laughs> <laughs> wasn't my fault. God. I know. <laughs> oh, God. I'll come down tomorrow morning, I'm sure. Tensions ran high in New York City today as thousands of city policemen were on duty to prevent any outbreaks as a result of the visit of the Arab leader, Yasser Arafat. Or should that be Yasser uh, Arafat? Let's Make a Deal is one of TV's most popular shows. During the course of the program, a question is asked of a contestant who is supposed to say that he watches Let's Make a Deal every Saturday night. However, this was his surprising reply. Let's Make a Deal, what happens every Saturday night at 7.30? I take a bath. <laughs> To continue on with the music of the night train show, we dig into the past to bring out an old blues standard, I've Got a Crush on You, and here to sing it, the Queen of the Boos, Miss Dinah Washington. I'm sorry, Miss Washington, Queen of the Blues, that should be. 
Viewers who were watching the conservative BBC in England were startled to hear this pompous commentator who was describing the Queen's Royal Horse Artillery. Millions are viewing this memorable and colourful event on television, as well as tens of thousands who have lined the streets here in London. The New Zealand contingent has just left Buckingham Palace. They will be followed by the Queen's Royal Horse Artillery. Oh, I beg your pardon, that should be Royal Horse Artillery. The on-the-scene excitement of fast-breaking news stories resulted in a disaster for this newscaster at the scene of a fire. All available firefighting equipment will be called out. When laymen are given the responsibility of broadcasting on the air, they are usually very nervous. They unconsciously attempt to cover up their nervousness by laughing. Here is a Coast Guard public service announcement that demonstrates this point. Go, go ahead any time, Brian. Coast Guard Air and Sea Units continue to search for a man missing overboard from the fishing vessel Master Lee, 27-year-old Walter Weald. Uh, let me start that over again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys drinking over there? Yeah. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead Coast Guard Air and Sea Units continue to search for a man missing overboard from the fishing vessel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Just a second. Oh. Let me give you to somebody else. Okay. Right? Yeah, can can you read it? <laughs> yeah, I think I can. Okay. Go ahead anytime. Coast Guard Air and Sea Units continue to search for a man missing overboard from the ill fated Birmingham. Bim <laughs> <laughs> you got the laughies over there. <laughs> hey, take her again anytime. Okay. <laughs> Or anything. No. <laughs> Go anytime. Coast Guard Air and Sea. Coast Guard Air and Sea units continue to. <laughs> ah, this is no good. We're still rolling. Can you, uh, <clears throat> all right. Coast Guard Air and Sea Units continue to search for a man. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I, I, give me five I hope minutes. you guys ain't searching for me when I'm overboard. And fellas, when you stop in at Barney's Men's Store, be sure to see those beautiful gabardoon seats. This is Alan Courtney speaking. Don't forget tonight at 9, our special guest will be... I forgot. The Viet Cong delegation at the Paris peace talks reacted predictably to President Nixon's forthcoming trip to Peking. The delegation said that Paris is the only place that President Nixon can find a peace. We take you now for the ball cast of the broad game. News wire service copywriters are commonly the perpetrators of bloopers which are read verbatim off the teletype by unsuspecting newscasters. Mr. Kissinger, who's awaiting confirmation as Secretary of State, seems to be very well qualified. He's obviously a man of sound judgment and intelligence. Mr. Kissinger is not married. We'll return to our midday movie matinee, The Blackboard Jungle, starring Sal Mineo, right after this menopause. That a uh, minute uh, pause. Let's turn back the clock to those thrilling days of yesteryear and hear this memorable line from the Lone Ranger. Hey there, Pete. What are we going to do with this here uh, stagecoach? I don't know, George. Hey, listen. I hear a white horse coming. Hey, that's a great line. I wonder who wrote that. A newscaster encounters many pressures in the hectic preparation of a daily newscast. He can be forgiven if he had one too many just before airtime. Here is an announcer who was feeling no pain. NBC Radio, News on the Hour. The news and brief, arsonists attempting eventually to uh, uh, avenge the assassination of Negro, uh, Negro extremist Malcolm X 
his headquarters was about Muslim, Muslim headquarters at the opposite ends of the country today. The Harlem headquarters were destroyed, as was a mosque in San Francisco on the West Coast. The women's liberation movement has resulted in a greater number of female broadcasters being employed on radio and television. Unfortunately, not all those accepted have the talent required. President Nixon returned today from a long vacation in Florida. Oh, I beg your pardon. President Ford just returned today from a long vacation in Florida in which he was at the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic with Jackie Gleason, Bob Hope, Jack Nicholas, and many other celebrities. And apparently the Florida vacation did him a lot of good. Ford returned looking fanned and tit. That is, tanned and fit. Uh. Tonight, CBS Report brings viewers an in-depth interview with Illinois' lawbreaker, lawmaker Howard Baker, who will discuss the water grate bacon. Fast-talking sports commentators bring mountains of statistics to the sports fans. However, they often trip themselves up in the maze of fast-changing scores. But uh, the Bucks, of course, had the 19-point lead and could afford to play a little bit cautiously. However, they did put the ball up 24 times, but hit on just uh, one-third of those shots, 8 out of 24 in the fourth quarter, while the Pistons got hot and, shit and hit it better than 53% on 14 out of 26. For you listeners who missed it, let's have an instant replay. But uh, the Bucks, of course, had the 19-point lead and could afford to play a little bit cautiously. However, they did put the ball up 24 times, but hit on just uh, one-third of those shots, 8 out of 24 in the fourth quarter, while the Pistons got hot and, shit and hit it better than 53% on 14 out of 26. Now the news at this hour. Where the hell is the news? Hey, hey you guys, where's the news? And now, back to Art Leafletter. Do you have any, any pets? Yes, a cat and a dog. Oh, do they have pedigrees? No, but we took them out. <laughs> what do you think a pedigree is? Please. Please? <laughs> do you have a dog or a cat? Yeah. What? A dog. What kind of a dog? Uh, part Cocker and part Fox Terrier. Mm -hmm. uh, pedigree? Yeah. Does it have a pedigree? Yeah. How do you know? Well, it goes over to another dog's house named Shadow. <laughs> do you know what a pedigree is? Yeah. What's a pedigree? A girlfriend. <laughs> Madam? Our next question is worth $50. Are you ready, madam? I wish you wouldn't keep calling me madam. Where I come from, that indicates someone that runs a house of ill repute. Oh, really, madam? <laughs> and for the best and relief of arthritis, bursitis, and rheumatism, use unguentine ointment to extinguish the pain. For more inflammation, read the label. Or I'm take you back. Now here's another million seller, sung by the very popular Urethra Franklin. Oops, wrong channel. Now, Aretha. The category for this jackpot question is famous mountain ranges. And now for $10,000, the last question, could you tell me where the Urals are located? You mean the ones we guys go to? coast-to-coast -coast broadcast of the Metropolitan Opera on ABC, Loritz Melchior, the distinguished Wagnerian tenor, was singing the lead role in Lohengrin. In the last act, he was supposed to leave the stage in a boat drawn by swans. However, the swans missed the cue of the stage crew and left the stage while Melchior was still singing. In complete calm, 
he turned to his fellow performers and said, Does anybody know what time does the next swan leave? This concludes another in the continuing series of recorded bloopers. Until we meet again, this is your narrator leaving you with the immortal words of Alexander Pope, who said, To err is human, to forgive divine.